For more than 30 years, IABD has been a front runner in the field of dance. This organization offers the opportunity for a big, better, and brighter future for the dance community. IABD is more than just a conference and festival. We are an international dance service organization. As we continue to strive and seek new partnerships, collaborations, and opportunities to engage in the field, our vision and future includes you. IABD just provides an incredible platform for artists of color. IABD can be a home not only for contemporary and modern and traditional African forms, but it can be a home for percussive dance like mine, stepping. I've grown so much as a result of the partnership with IABD. It's just a critical space for me to learn and to grow, and most importantly, connect with my peers who lead arts organizations across the country. New members can expect to join an extremely welcoming and supportive network. There are individuals and companies in IABD that have been doing this work for decades. They have lessons learned, they have experience they can offer that can really make you feel like you're not approaching the work alone. This is trying work, it can get very cumbersome, and to feel the support of those that have done the work and been in the trenches before you can really be transformative, particularly for a new organization or new leadership. I cannot think of a way in which the partnership and our experience in the network has not been beneficial, whether that be for our administrative staff, our teaching artists, our students, um, the leadership and how to navigate and interface with different funders, even how to really speak articulately and confidently about the work that we do and how meaningful it is to the sustainability of the arts industry. At IABD, dance thrives here. It thrives in our local communities in the dance studio. It thrives on the stages of our companies. It thrives in the heartbeat and in the minds of those who love dance. I'm Joan Myers Brown. This is Step Africa. Hi, my name is Carol Foster. My name is Hope Boykin. My name is Anthony Burrell. This is the Dance Institute of Washington. My name is Tamika Washington Miller. My name is Sholem Williams. My name is Sekou Kong. Waverly Lucas. I am Robert Moses. My name is Kirsten Zamani. My name is Kirsten My name is Lily Marlowe. I am Sean McLeod. This is the International Association of Blacks in Dance, and we are IABD. The stage is split into two halves in front of a long row of mirrors. One half is a bedroom, which is a double bed and an end table, and the other half is a dance studio, which is a freestanding bar. There is a door frame between the bedroom and the studio. Overture. In half light, Claire rehearses her ballet solo for her senior showcase at center, in between the two halves of the stage. She does this facing herself in the mirror. She's quietly singing parts of the music to herself and stopping to go over various steps. After a moment, she starts the music to go through the entire piece. As she dances, the music speeds up of its own accord and she is forced to keep up with it. Eventually, she cannot and she collapses, exhausted. Billy enters and helps her up. One, lights up on the dance studio. The girls are stretching before class. Claire sits slightly apart from the others as they chat. She stares in the mirror at herself. I hope we skip Adagio today. When has Kristen ever skipped Adagio? 
I'm gonna fall asleep standing up, I swear. Is one night of rest too much to ask for? Quit one of your jobs. Your health is more important. Easy for you to say. Don't you already have a contract lined up with Richmond Ballet? Oh my god, you got into the Richmond Ballet? Yes, Anna, I told you not to tell anyone. Sorry, it's just so cool. That's amazing, Mimi. When did you even audition? A few weeks ago when I was visiting my boyfriend. So cool. How is it, by the way? Long distance? It's okay. We FaceTime all the time, so it's not that bad. He sent me a care package last week. I wish Chris did shit like that. He's so boring. Is he still with that band? Yeah. Not like they're making any new music, though. <laughs> Chris spends all his time shooting down their ideas, as if his are any better. We should do a double date. James plays the guitar. Chris doesn't like double dates. I think it makes him insecure. Girl, why are you still with him? Because the sex is really good. <laughs> Claire looks up. How's Ben, Claire? I saw him at the library last week. Oh, he's good. You guys are so cute. Didn't you move in together last year? Uh, yeah, in April this year. Man, that's serious. I could never live with Chris. How long have you been together? Uh, I think three years, three and a half. Damn. So cute. <laughs> Billy. Hey. Hi, lady. Shit. I thought I was going to be so late, but I caught a lucky train, so. We were just talking about how married Claire is. Gross. Don't say that. Claire, I've never had a three-year-long relationship with anything. I was married <laughs> to your Claire Witch Project. We've never even talked about marriage. That's how relationships are, though. You either break up with them or you marry them. That is terrifying to think about. Unless you get creative. We are way too young to think about that. You don't have to worry about it if you're clairvoyant. What is with you and defiling my name? I'd rather defile you, sweetie. God, you're horrible. <laughs> is the mirror cracked? Looks like it. How did that get there? Maybe Antoine stared into it too hard and it just couldn't handle the pressure. Did you hear that Rhiannon left because he had a fight with her? Ooh, teacher drama. That really why she left? I don't know. I heard the boys talking about it. Why was Rhiannon the one that left? Antoine's always talking about how he's too good for this place. Maybe he needed to stick around to remind everyone. Oh, shit. starts <laughs> in two minutes. Kristen will be here any minute. Pull your hair back, Billy. My hair is like two inches long. It just has to be out of your face. I got reprimanded in my freshman year appearance group for it. They've definitely given up my appearance grade by now. Lights fade in the studio as the girls line up at the bar, soft shoes on. Two. Lights up on Claire and Ben's bedroom. It is nighttime. Ben is lying with his head on Claire's lap as she carves her fingers through his hair. She is looking into the mirror. She catches him looking at her through it. What's up? Nothing. Hey, I missed you today. Me too. We're going to have so much more time when we graduate. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll miss being in school and dancing every day, but I might miss having free time even more. <laughs> we should plan a trip together or something after your showcase in May. Yeah, I'd love that. I had a weird dream last night. You were in it. Yeah. Yeah, I was climbing the Eiffel Tower with you and Brian, Brian from home, climbing up the side of it with a bungee cord, and there were these dragonflies flying all around our heads, and it was really hard to see anything because of the swarm of dragonflies, but we were still climbing, and we were nearing the top, and we noticed that King Kong was there at the top already waiting for us, and we were like, shit, that's King Kong. He's definitely going to fuck us up. But for some reason, we just kept climbing up. And, oh yeah, and, and we have like backpacks carrying all these oranges and limes and just different citrus fruits. And we're wearing these backpacks this whole time. So we get to the top and King Kong starts to come at us. And so Brian and I are like, let's try and offer him these fruits and stuff to him because we figure monkeys like fruit, right? And then Brian's like, where's Claire? And we look around. And you're not there anymore. 
but we keep looking and you're riding on the back of one of these dragonflies away from us in King Kong. And then I couldn't see you anymore. What happened to King Kong? Oh, we ended up just talking it out with him and then he took me and Brian to Tokyo. <laughs> Your dreams are so crazy all the time. I know. And then we filmed a music video with the cast of The Fast and The Furious. <laughs> what do you think it means? I don't think it meant anything. I don't think dreams really mean anything. But there's, there's got to be a reason you're dreaming it, right? I mean, dreams are just your brain consolidating everything that happened during the day. And the dreams themselves are completely random. But the images, they must come from something. Maybe you subconsciously want to be an actor or something because of all the fast and furious stuff. You're the artist, not me. And there's no definitive proof that dreams represent unconscious desires or predict the future or anything like that. Trust me. Okay, psychology today. <laughs> what did you dream about last night? I don't dream, or I haven't since I was a kid. Well, you forget 95% of your dreams, but everyone generally has at least three dreams a night. Okay. Are you trying to get me to help you study for your COG psych exam? I was just saying, you definitely have dreams. Then I can't remember any of them. Maybe your dreams are as crazy as mine. Maybe. I wouldn't know. You could keep a dream journal. Hmm. You could write down as much as your dream as you can remember as soon as you wake up. It wouldn't work right away, but you definitely start remembering more eventually. Yeah, I know what a dream journal is. Are you mad at me? No, I'm not mad at you. Okay, because sometimes I can't tell with you. Like, sorry, I'm a dick. It's a good idea. I'll start a dream journal. You don't have to. No, come on. Grab me one of those notebooks I'm always buying and never using. It's on your side. Ben looks over to his side and finds the pile of notebooks under the bed. He takes one out and hands it to Claire, who takes a pen to the first page of it. Dream journal. There. Now you'll have to hear all my dreams. Don't leave me, okay? What? Sorry, that was out of nowhere. Why did you say that? No reason, just... <laughs> When you flew away on that dragonfly, I got so, it made me really sad. Uh, hey, it's a, just a dream. I'm not going to leave you. It's stupid. Dreams don't mean anything, but I really missed you. I'm right here. Can I have a hug? She hugs him. She kisses his forehead. They stay like that for a moment. Let's go to bed, okay? I'll even be Big Spoon. You're the girl of my dreams. I know, I know. Come on, I'll protect you from the scary dragonflies. They crawl under the covers. Good night. Love you. Love you too. Can you turn the light off? Yeah. She reaches over and turns the light off. Lights go out on the bedroom. Lights up on the studio. Billy stretches at the bar. She puts her leg up and bends in half. Claire walks over to her. Oh, I hate this winter, dude. My joints feel like I'm 73. I love it. It's my favorite season. That's just because you're a human radiator. <laughs> my mom says I got it from my dad. Not what she told me last night. <laughs> you're so lame. Hey, do you want to see if I can do the 32 fuetes from Swan Lake? Mimi can barely do 30. I'm not Mimi. No, or you'd have been Odile last semester. Hey, don't be a dick. Okay, sorry. Yes, show me your fuetes. Get your camera out. <laughs> yeah, and I'll post it to the group chat when you fall on your ass. What did I say about being a dick, Claramel? That's not how you say my name. Billy does a quick releve and then a double pirouette to warm herself up. Ready? One, two, three, four, four five, five, 
Six. Seven. seven. Billy starts to tilt to one side, and halfway through 23, she wobbles and falls to the ground with a crack. Fucking ow! Bill! Are you okay? I heard a crack. That did not sound good. Please do not send that to the group chat. I wasn't even filming. Okay, because I can hardly tell with you. Look, you didn't warm up properly. Big idiot. Take your shoe off. We need to check if it's swollen. Relax, Claire Force One. I didn't hurt myself. Don't be stupid. Don't you want to keep your Arabian Nights solo? Take it off. I know you want me, baby, but buy me a drink first. At Claire's look, Billy takes her shoe off. Claire gently checks for swelling. Your feet are cold. Your hands are warm. Claire pulls Billy's convertible tights up to her calf and cradles her ankle. We should wrap this before everyone else comes in for rehearsal. And then you're going to have to come up with a good reason why you hurt yourself because showing off is not a good look. Nobody's coming, honey. What are you talking about? We start in like 10 minutes. We're the only ones here. Billy pulls Claire forward and kisses her. The lights flood bright orange. Claire scrambles up and backs away into the darkness. See you in class, cutie. Lights down in the studio. Lights up in the bedroom early the next morning. Claire has just woken up, sweating. She wipes her forehead and takes a deep breath. She turns on the bedside light, grabs a glass of water by the bed, and swallows it in hasty gulps, swiping off the droplets that don't make it into her mouth. She looks over. Ben is asleep next to her. She opens a dream journal. February 17th, 5 a.m. Ballet studio. I was stretching before class. Billy was there and she was dancing and then she hurt herself. I, I don't remember why. Maybe it was showing off. Dream Billy is just as obnoxious as regular Billy. The resemblance is uncanny actually. Ben stirs awake. Why are you awake? Go back to sleep. I can't get the lights on. I'll turn it off in a bit. What are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm dream journaling. Oh, cool. You remembered something? Something. I think it's working. Told you. It's still spotty, though. Like, I can tell I'm forgetting most of it, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, that's kind of how forgetting things go. Hey, don't be a dick. Sorry, I'm tired. No, I shouldn't have woken you. The dream's gone anyways. Let's just go back to bed. What time is it? Like, uh, 5 a.m.? Oh, fuck me. Then you have to be in class in like three hours. Yeah, I'll just get up then. Can you turn the light off? Yeah, one sec. Love you. Love you too. See you tonight. Claire turns off the light. Lights go out on the bedroom. Three, the studio in half light. The girls do their reverence for the teacher full lights up on the girls as the music ends and they clap the end of class before running up and thanking themselves in the mirror as if they were the teacher. Jordan goes first and immediately starts to take her point shoes off. I cannot believe she ended late again. Reverence takes so fucking long. It's to express our gratitude for the music and the teacher. Yeah, Mimi, I know what it's for. It's going to make me late for work. I don't know why she has to be so rude about it. Give her a break, dude. She's probably exhausted. She's doing it to herself. It's not like she didn't know what her dance schedule was going to be. Well, it's her fault that she has to pay for rent? Just because your daddy pays for everything in your education doesn't mean- Come on, that. Bill. Don't be mean. Oh my god, you're such a bitch. Oh yeah, I'm the bitch. You know what? If you'll excuse me, I have another audition to go to. I actually care about my career and make time for it. God, what a fucking stuck-up piece of shit! You two need to stop fighting. No wonder Jordan ran out. 
Jordan ran out because she has a life outside of the studio, unlike somebody else. Here's a hint. Her name starts with M and ends Girl, with... Just let it go. She's not even here. Fine. Jordan did seem really tired today. I felt bad for her. I saw her fall asleep during bar. Honestly, I've been there. She's gonna get sick if she keeps overworking herself like that. She's a big girl. I'm sure that she can take care of herself. Okay, ladies, I have to go to dinner with my parents. They want to meet James. Good luck. I'll need it. First, their daughter decides to dance for a living, and then she dates an actor. <clears throat> Maybe if I get them to order a bottle of wine, it'll go over better. All right. I'll walk out with you. Bye, ladies. Hey, uh, you're going uptown, right? You live in Turtle Bay? Yeah. I have an audition in Midtown. Do you want to walk together, Clary Oldman? <laughs> um, I was going to work on my composition assignment before I went home. Ah, okay. But I'm hungry, so yeah, I'll walk with you. Cool. Maybe we can get you an eclair. <laughs> You're not funny. Claire starts taking her point shoes off and getting ready to go. Hurry up. I'm trying. Just kidding. Nobody has a studio book for another hour. I know, dipshit. I was going to use it before. Touchy, touchy. <laughs> You're such a pretty girl. Shut up. I mean it. I'm not hitting on you. I'm, I'm just stating a fact. I didn't think you were hitting on me. If I were hitting on you, you would know. You're so annoying. We get it. You're into girls. So? Oh, uh, I was kidding. I, I didn't mean... Yeah, I'm gay. <laughs> What's the problem? Nothing. No problem. That's totally fine. I just, I, I didn't know. Uh, have you seen me? Well, yeah, but... I get it. Not a lot of lesbian ballerinas. I guess not. I... Don't really think about it. We don't really talk about it. Actually, why don't we talk about it? I don't know. And maybe nobody wants to think about gay people who dance. I mean, it kind of goes unsaid that all the boys are gay. And that all the girls are straight. Right. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. How did you know? I mean, if nobody talks about it, if nobody even thinks about it. Honestly? Duh. Um, uh, there was this girl in my dance class. I had been dancing with her since I joined that ballet school. So for three years, give or take. Dance came easier to her than walking or eating or anything else that a person does. A regular Mimi. I don't know, she was just so talented and so modest about it too. All the other really great ballet dancers I've been in class with have been kind of loud about it, kind of braggy. But she never talked about being better than anybody else. And she was kind of quiet, kind of like you. I was... 13, you know, like insecure, kind of awkward. I didn't look people in the eye when I talked to them, but her eyes were this beautiful, beautiful green. And when I was with her, I just couldn't look anywhere else. I didn't know whether I wanted to be her best friend or to be her. Only after I switched ballet schools and never saw her again did I realize that I wanted to be with her. You miss her? No, not really. It was a long time ago. Do you think she would have liked you back? Probably not. You know, even after I came out, I still always assumed that every other girl in my ballet studio was straight. I still kind of do. I did too, I guess. Thanks for telling me. No problem, Claire Force One. Feels good to talk about it. It makes it feel more real, if that makes sense. I, I think so.
And um, you already used Clear Force One? Really? I thought that one was new. Oh, maybe I'm remembering something else. <laughs> uh, do you still want to walk together? Yeah, yeah, let's go. Lights down on the studio. Four. Lights up in the bedroom. A couple months later. Ben is reading in bed. Claire enters after a moment on the phone. Yeah, Bill, I'm home. It's been 30 minutes, and I told you it would take me 30 minutes. Okay, okay. Thanks for making sure my home safe. Shut up. You're such an idiot. Did you just call me Affordable Claire Act? Christ. Look, I have to go. No, it isn't. Okay, bye. Bye. Jesus. It's Bill. Should I be worried? What do you mean? You're not cheating on me, are you? Don't be stupid. Billy's a girl. I was kidding. I know you're not cheating on me. Claire puts down her things and changes into her sleep clothes. You're home late. I know. I just, I really wanted to get Beth's choreo right. She made such a gorgeous piece and I want to do it justice, you know? And Mimi's so good, I don't want to look bad next to her. She flops into bed. <sighs> good night. What, you're going to bed already? I'm so tired, babe. I thought we could hang out. At 12.45 a.m.? Yeah. Maybe watch an episode of something? Can we hang out tomorrow? I'll be home earlier. All right. Okay, sorry. You don't have to be sorry. I miss you, that's all. We live together, silly. I know, I know. Is that bruise new? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, the teacher threw a shoe at me. I still can't believe you have to put up with that. It's just the way it is. I mean, my leg wasn't extended straight enough. What about that one? Another teacher? Uh, <laughs> no, this one's from smashing my leg into the bar. Hurt more than the shoe. I don't like it when you get hurt. You know, I don't either. Do you want me to turn the light off? No, you're reading. I can sleep with it on. All right. I love you. Good night. Lights down on the bedroom. Lights on in the studio. Claire walks to center with her dream journal. April 3rd, 6 a.m. Another dream with Bill. Billy enters the studio and watches her through the mirror. We were in this forest, but on the trees, instead of leaves, there were, the branches grew mirrors, like little mirrors that flickered in the rising sunlight. And it was really early and Billy was using this ancient gnarled walking stick and poking everything interesting with it. Her hair was damp, like feather. And it was, it was, it had just been washed and it was sticking up all over the place. And it was in a nest, like, a nest of knotted feathers. It was cute. And we walked through the woods along this, this stream, this deep, black, impossible stream that flowed out of this deep, black, impossible lake. And when we got to the lake, I looked down in the reflection of the water. My face was all weird looking, like I couldn't quite recognize myself, but I knew for sure it was me. Billy's face was crystal clear, of course. Could have seen the drop of water sliding off her nose from across the lake. She was so clear in my head. And in the reflection, I was wearing one of my dance leotards and my tights. And I started to sweat. This strange person I was looking at in the lake that was me, she started to sweat. And her leotard started to fill up a little, like my skin was a water balloon. And the meat and fat in my thighs and my belly and in my back and on my shoulders started to swell and surge against the fabric and I started to shake. Billy walks to her side. I didn't want to look in the lake at her face because I knew I would be crying and I'm such a fucking ugly crier. 
So instead, I just looked at my little sausage fingers and Billy reached down and she took them in her hand, freezing cold like always. And she held my hand. She held my hand until I woke up. Billy holds her hand. They look at each other. Five. Lights change in the studio. The girls are going on their lunch break before their next class. You know what my dream job is? I'm a principal dancer at the New York City Ballet. Well, yeah, but after I get old and I can't dance anymore, I want to run a bread bowl restaurant chain. I don't think I've had bread in like a year. Oh, you are depriving yourself, dude. Bread is like my favorite food. <laughs> Just don't tell our teachers that. Ooh, Anna, you should call your restaurant the upper crust. Not everything needs to be a pun, Billy. I actually kind of like that. Mimi, what are your post-ballet plans? Mimi's going to be dancing until the day she dies. Actually, I think I just want to travel for a while. I want to see the Great Lakes and the Amazon rainforest and the Himalayas and everything. But I, I want to dance for as long as possible. I mean, dancing is the dream. Isn't it? Can we do this while we get lunch? I saw a new Korean place on my way here this morning. Sorry, guys. I brought food from home. You're so responsible. I really need to start doing meal prep. It saves so much money. It's changed my life. I keep seeing these food videos online about it. Let's go, dudes. I am hungry. You coming, North Carolina? I was going to take a nap in the studio. For lunch? Yeah. You okay, girl? Yeah, I'm just tired. Tell me about it. Are you sick? No, I'm fine. I've just not been sleeping well. James snores like crazy. I sleep with lavender under my pillow. It's supposed to help. You know, I've heard that about lavender. It's none of my business, but Michelle really shouldn't have said that to you in class today. She's a teacher. That's really inappropriate. Said what? You know, about the size of your leotard. It's not too small. You look great. Wait, wait, wait. I was in the bathroom. What'd she say? She said, is your leotard too small or are you just getting fat? What the fuck? I know. She didn't mean it. Yeah, she did. Teachers have been telling me I'm fat and stupid since I was a toddler. Michelle is way nicer than she needs to be. <laughs> I'm sorry for bringing it up. I just wanted to say that, you know, you don't have to worry about your weight. You're like so skinny. Wait, is that why you're skipping lunch? No. You're so insensitive. Seriously? Oh, shit. Look, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. I'm, it's fine. I'm fine. You sure you don't want to come to lunch with us? Yes, I'm sure. You want some of my lunch or something? I think I packed too much anyway. Look, I'm just not fucking hungry, okay? I just want to take my nap. Sorry. It's okay. Really. See you in partnering. Sweet dreams. dreams. Um, are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry I asked you that in front of everybody. It's fine. You sure you're not hungry? Just because Michelle said that shit about you, it doesn't- Stop treating me like I'm five. I'm just- Trying to be a good friend, South Carolina. That's cheating. You already said North Carolina. Nothing wrong with covering all your bases, baby girl. Go. I'm okay, I promise. I'll see you later. Hey, love you, okay? Love you too. Claire stares after her. She assembles a makeshift pillow with her dance bag and a pair of sweats, then lies down and covers herself with a jacket. She falls asleep. Six. Lights up on the bedroom as lights fade on the studio. Billy lies on the bed, waiting. Hey, I'm a desktop computer. Can I crash at your place? Bill, <laughs> what are you doing here? Welcoming my baby home. You're not even going to acknowledge the pickup line? I spent like 10 minutes thinking that one up. Where's Ben? Who's Ben? 
Please tell me you're kidding. You're not cheating on me, are you? Don't be stupid. Ben's a boy. Ew, cuties. How did you get in here? Well, I sat out in the hall for an hour, and then your roommate came home and let me in. That's... I was going to say creepy, but... Kind of romantic? Hmm. I just know you so well, Claire Wolf. Werewolf? Because you make me wild, like a wolf. (laughs) Why do I like you again? Ooh, you just said you liked me. We've been dating for three years, Bill. How is a chiropractor? He's changing my life. I want to see him every week, maybe even every day. Could you hook me up? I think there's something wrong with my neck. It hurts when I turn it too far to the right. Is it from sleeping? You always sleep on your left. Wouldn't it make more sense if I was sleeping on my right? I don't know. I took anatomy like three years ago. Claire. Hi. What's she doing here? I'm spending a Saturday with my girlfriend. She's not your girlfriend. Um, how did I get in then? Her roommate let you in. Wrong. I have a set of keys. Claire, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. I thought my roommate let her in. She lives here, Claire. She has a set of keys. But then how did you get in? I live here too. I lived here first. Right. Yeah, but... I thought you said you weren't cheating on me. I'm not. I thought you said you weren't cheating on me. I'm not. I thought you said Billy was a girl. I am a girl, you twat. I thought you didn't like girls. Oh, she definitely does. I don't know. I don't know. Kiss me back, remember? You're kidding yourself. Come on, Claire. I know you. You can't run from me, honey. You love me. You said you weren't going to leave me. What happened to... Claire tears herself through the doorway into the studio, already in tears and choking for air. She sinks to the ground. Billy enters with her dance bag, ready for class. Billy notices her and goes to her. Bill. You okay, Claire Naked Ladies? I feel like I'm cheating when I see you. What? I feel like I'm cheating on Ben when I see you in my sleep. In your your sleep? I dream about you all the time. I mean, you show up in my head. I wake up and I I don't know where I am. I I only know you were just with me. And I I fall asleep every night and wake up every morning next to Ben. But in between, it's just you. And I feel like I'm I'm going crazy. When does the dream end? When does it, when does it begin? You need to take a deep breath. I can't breathe. I know, baby. Okay, hold my hand, okay? Okay. You feel me squeezing your hand? Yeah. Focus on that. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I'm not 12 years old. Claire. I'm doing it. You're doing it. <sighs> Better? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, anytime. You dream about me? Please forget I said that. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little creepy. I know, it's so weird. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. I'm kind of honored. I don't want to talk about it. Please. Okay. Well, why do you feel like you're cheating on Ben, though? Are these dreams? Well, I just said I didn't want to talk about it. Are they sex dreams or something? No, no. Hey. no they're not sex dreams. We're, we're just... I. Uh, I don't know. It wouldn't have been a big deal either way. And we're what? We're just... Together? Oh, God, I feel like I'm in middle school again. You're so cute when you're flustered. You are making this so much worse. (laughs) Claire. A phone alarm blares like a siren and Billy drops to the ground like a puppet with its strings cut. The lights go out in the studio. In the dark. Claire, your alarm's going off. Claire! 
Lights go up on the bedroom. Claire grabs her phone from the nightstand and throws it violently at the mirrors behind the bed. The mirror cracks and the alarm cuts off abruptly. Whoa. Sorry. I need to change that alarm. It pisses me off. I can see that. Are you okay? Yeah. Why don't you look at me? What? Seriously, you look like my mom's dog when he gets caught digging up the potted plants. I do not look like that. Are you not telling me something? Christ, Ben, I'm not hiding anything from you. I'm tired. I just woke up. I just... (laughs) Am I doing something wrong? No, you're not doing anything. Should I be? Ben, it's not about you. So there is something. No. I promise you can tell me. I have nothing to tell you. Is because you don't is it because you don't love me anymore? Am am I like boring you? Fucking no, Ben. Neither of those things. I started remembering my dreams and it turns out all of them are about Billy and I think I'm really gay. So it is that you don't love me. I did not say that. I do, I think. You think? No, I, I, I do. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm really confused. I've, I've been really confused. How long have you been thinking about this? Two months, basically, since I started remembering my dreams. You didn't tell me this whole time? What should I have said, Ben? I'm dating this woman in my sleep, and also, I think I'm gay? You're full-on gay? That's what I'm saying! I don't know! So Billy is making you think you're a lesbian now. She's not making me think anything, Ben. What does it mean, then, for us? I don't know. I love you. You know that I love you. Yeah, I do. What am I supposed to do until you figure it out? I care about you a lot and nothing is going to change that. But you don't know if you're still in love with me? No, I guess not. But I said I wouldn't leave you, Ben, and I'm not. I'm, I just need time. God, Claire, I don't know if I can wait. What do you mean? I don't know if I could wait around while you figure out whether you love me or not. Are you serious? Would you really only love me if you knew for sure I loved you back? I'm sorry, that was shitty. That's not fair to ask. I don't think I would. Oh. I don't know either. I know it's supposed to be like, I love you no matter what happens, but I don't know if I would. Seven, half light in the studio and in the bedroom. Claire sits on her bed and writes in her dream journal. As the girls wrap up their class, we hear what Claire is saying in a monologue. May 19th. 5.34 a.m. I thought I would stop having dreams about Billy after Ben and I broke up, but I guess she's just as persistent in my sleep as she is when I'm awake. I can't help but look forward to falling asleep. It's embarrassing and stupid. She never looks at me like that in the real world. Lights up on the studio at the end of class. Claire stays where she is. I'm kind of gonna miss Antoine. I won't get missed. I won't miss getting yelled at in French. I think I might miss it a little. I could give you his email if you want. I don't know if I'll miss him that much. It could be a good connection. You know, you're right. Text it to me. Remember when he was like, that's not what I told you. Am I speaking a different language? (laughs) And we were like, yeah. I think I'm practically fluent because of him. In my dream, I'd just been bitten by a zombie. It didn't look like anybody I knew, just the -the run-of-a-mill apocalypse genre zombie. It bit me in the foot, and the first thing I thought was, oh shit, how am I going to do my senior showcase? 
and Billy took off her cardigan, which is weird because I've never seen her wear a cardigan. And she wrapped, she started wrapping my foot with it. And she was screaming at me to get up because we had to run, but I was tired. I just wanted to sit there and look at my foot with these bite marks in it. Oh, I'll miss you ladies. Me too. Why are you guys acting like we'll never see each other again? Everybody knows everyone in this industry. I'm gonna get sick of you all. Would it kill you to show even a sliver of sensitivity? I am plenty sensitive. We should go out for drinks after the showcase on Friday. I have work. You're killing me. I'll go with you. Thank you, Anna. I'm glad this program has yielded me one friend at the end of everything. I was fucking with you, man. Obviously, I have a fake. The bone underneath was exposed, and the muscles around it were dark pink, like the pit of a peach. I would have thrown up in real life, but in the dream, I just looked at it. Billy covered it up and picked me up and brought us to this dilapidated concert hall, as if it wasn't strange that she could carry me on her back like it was no problem. She unwrapped my foot and planted her mouth on the wound. I asked her what she was doing and she said, I'm sucking the venom out of it, like it was a snake bite or something. And as she was sucking on my foot, which sounds really gross now that I'm writing it down, little pieces of her face started to flake and fall off. I'll meet up with you guys later in the night if you're still hanging out, I have an audition. Can James come? James doesn't have to go with you everywhere. Does he not have friends? He likes to hang out with us. Oh, that's a no then. God, you're such a dick. Yeah, James can come. Hi. Mimi, I thought you liked James. I do. I just thought that maybe this could be a dancer thing. For once, I agree with you, Memes. Don't call me that. Let's just figure this out later. And her fingernails turned brittle and her skin turned gray and... Her body started to convulse a little bit, and I realized she was getting infected and turning into a zombie. But her eyes were the same. She glanced up at me, and her eyes were the same, but she was worried. She asked me why I was staring at her like that, and I said, look, because there was a mirror behind us stretching across the wall like the one in the studio. She looked into it and saw her sagging face and rotting teeth, and she just stared back at me. And she said, better me than you, like a character out of a B Hollywood movie. And I said, fuck that, and I kissed her. I could taste the poison in her mouth. Sour like vinegar, bitter like rind, and sweet like nectar. Has anybody seen my phone? Jordan Mabry, did you bring your phone into the studio? Shut up. I know you do the same thing. I guess it doesn't matter now that we're done. No, it does not. Do you want me to call it? No, it's okay. Antoine will still get mad if he hears it ringing in studio. He's not even here. Just call it. Fourth levels have class in the studio soon. Oh, uh, yeah, we should get out. Listen for the phone. A quiet buzzing as Jordan's phone goes off. Silence as everyone tries to identify the source. There. Yes, thank you. Come on, we have 10 minutes till rehearsal. Our last rehearsal. Stop, you're gonna make me sad. The venom didn't taste so bad on her teeth. My mouth started to go numb and my ears got hot and I lost all feeling in my toes a little bit and in my fingers, like pins and needles everywhere at once. And I wondered, is this just what it's like to kiss a girl? Claire puts her journal down and walks through the door frame into the studio. It's as if she has been there the whole time. Where should we go on Friday? We could go to that bar with the really good limoncello. God, you're so right. Claire hangs back and touches Billy's shoulder. What's up, Meta Claire for all? Nothing. I just wanted to talk to you about something. Sounds serious. No, it's not. Uh, it is a little bit. I, I've been trying to figure something out, and I just thought you would be the right person to ask. Uh, the suspense is killing me. 
I've been having these dreams. Blackout. 